OEM low beams and OEM high beams. And then low beams and high beams. Welcome to Mike Golden Garage. And in this video, we're gonna be installing some new Oracle seven inch LED halo headlights for the Jeep Wrangler behind me here. You can see right over here, I ordered these off of Quadratech. There are a few different ones I was looking at. They also have some RGB ones, but they're like double the price. So with these ones on the TJ, they should be pretty simple to install. Basically you just plug the headlight into the OEM slot, except with the halos, we do have to do a little bit of wiring with that. These are the different models you can get. I got the 001, the white halo. You can also get them in a different color. Also, like I said, the RGB did look really cool, but maybe that's the one I'll get next time if these work out pretty decently. Let's do the unboxing now. So just slap it open, you got some instructions for a JK. We got a TJ. Basically the same thing, except you don't have to remove the grill from the TJ. Got a warranty card there. And then another diagram just to show for the TJ. Well, anything before TJ and excluding the YJ. Uh, basically just plug and play. So here are the headlights. Got a sticker. Got an adapter, which we shouldn't need. And whoop, there goes one of the adapters. But here's the headlight. All right, so there's the halo ring around there, which, so with the headlight, this is just plugs and goes, you're good to go. But with the halo, you're gonna need to splice these in, which we'll be taking a look at in a little bit. So let's uh, basically just remove the headlight first. So now to remove the factory OEM headlights on the TJ, just gonna need a T15 Torx bit. Gonna remove that screw, that one, and on the other side, right there. Just gonna remove those, just like that. And let's remove them. Now let's remove this final one. And we're just gonna throw it in here for now for safekeeping. Now this ring will come right out. We got one screw there. Another screw right there, uh, and one more there, and another one there. So a total of four screws to remove the headlight housing. We're on the last screw now, and let's get that off. That there, a little corrosion on it. And then this ring will come out right there. We'll just throw that right in there for now. And then this, we may want to pop the hood. So right back here, we can just unplug. Just pulls right out, just wiggle it a little bit. And the headlight comes right out. With the OEM headlight out, let's get the new Halo headlight installed. So we're just gonna take these wires, run them right through here. Just like that. And we're just gonna set that there. Right there. Now we're gonna grab the locking ring here. Now hold it. Okay, hold it. There we go. So now we're just gonna get the T15 screw again. Yeah, you just want to be careful you don't scratch the lens, it's plastic. One screw there, and then we'll get another one opposite side. For now, just to test the headlight, make sure it's working right. So now with two screws in, we should be good to plug it in and make sure it's working right. And then we'll take a look at the halo wires in a little bit. Right now though, we're just gonna plug this into the OEM socket right here just like that now let's turn the headlights on and see if it works all right looks good now high beams all right looks good to me and then let's get a full shot and turn them off all right looks good here it is fully locked down and now let's get the outer ring 
and we're just gonna line up the holes there and let's get the screws back in. All right, so we got both headlights installed and it seems like they're both working. Now we just need to wire up the LED halos. Okay. Oh yeah, those are really bright. Can't wait to see how they are at night. Now we're gonna connect the red wire from each of the halo headlights for the halos. So right over here, we're gonna connect this red wire all the way over to this red wire. And then basically once we get these two connected, we're gonna have a third wire come off from the middle and run over to the fuse box, which we'll take a look at in one second. So now the fun part, this is gonna be a really good way to do it. Basically you wanna run it through the passenger headlight right through there might be a little hard to see. There's a little bit of light coming through that goes through the grill, which comes right under here. And you're gonna just slide it all the way through the grill. And then it goes down right there on the driver's side. And this is where you're gonna to have to go under the Jeep and try and get it all the way up through right here near the breather hose right there. And you just wanna make sure you do not wrap it around the steering column. That is that piece right down there on the right. So once we have it run through the Jeep, we're going to now connect the two red wires. So now I got this pack off of Amazon like a year ago. It's solderless terminal, so basically it's shrink tubing that when you heat it up, the solder in the middle right there will melt and make a good contact for these two uh, wires. Just want to get the solder over the middle of the two wires right there. And then when it shrinks, it should seal it. Now we're just going to use the heat gun. Starting to melt and it should make a watertight seal. Get it at the bottom a little. Yeah, it on. Did that melt? Looks like it's starting to melt. Go from the other side. Yeah. All right, that should be good. So now for the negative terminal, we're gonna get this set up. We're gonna remove this bolt here that already has a ground wire to it. There we go. And then we need to get a terminal that will fit that. So let's look in the box. On the driver's side, we just did the negative terminal and connected it right to there. And then here's the red wire that we just soldered, which is running through the front of the grill. And now we need to connect the passenger terminal to the negative. We're prepping the wires on the passenger side now. I get a little extra wire free. Without cutting through the others. Yep. Just gonna wanna carefully trim it so you can get the plastic or rubber off. There we go. I'm gonna fold this up so that it fits better in here for crimping. Okay. And then we'll slide that in here and tighten it up. Tighten that down. Now we're going to be doing the red wire on the passenger side. Just going to slip that right in there. And connect the two wires. Right back over. Side or side. Perfect. All right, let's cheat trick it. Oh. Moving around a 
in there. The bottom is a little more on uh, this side. Okay, okay. that looks other good. Red areas. Yeah, they melt. Sealed it. Yeah, right away. Now I just picked this up from Advanced Auto Parts. It was like eight dollars or so. Mini at a circuit holder. Basically, this is going to go into the fuse box. Right over here. We're gonna put it into the radio fuse, which should be this one right here. And this is a 2004 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, so different year models and all that may have different wiring setups. So just check whichever ones you want. So now what we've done, we've taken the red wire, cut it in half, and spruced up the ends there. And now we've got a third wire that's just an extension that's gonna run directly to the fuse box. We're gonna get those soldered together now. All right, so here is the soldered main wire to the extension wire. And now, zoom out. And here's the add a circuit going right into where we had it, which was the radio again. It's a 15 amp. So we've got actually a 15 amp for the main fuse, which is what was there. And then we added a 10 amp fuse for the lights. And now let's just turn it on and see. It fits, look at that. Okay, perfect. So I've actually decided to go with the fuel injector fuse since I tested a few other ones, which we tested the radio, we tested the power. All those had current power just running to it all the time. So the injector right here, which is right there. That only turns on when the engine is running. Uh, if you turn the key on, it'll turn on for a second, but you gotta actually start the engine for them to work. So if we come over here and look now, so they're not on right now, so I'm gonna go turn the key on. I'm gonna turn the key, just turn the key to the ignition on, and they're off? Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna start it. So right now we got these all tie strapped right there for now. Maybe do a little more maintenance in a little bit. But for now, just to get moving on the road, everything is good to go. High beams. beams, high beams, low beams. So it does look like the he headlights need to be angled down a bit because they do seem to be really high. There's the high beams again. Oh, They're yeah. all the way up there. So that's a bit of an issue. So I'll need to work on that next. But the light is fantastic. Holy, yeah. they got to be blinded. Do the high 
high beams in a moment. Mm. Yeah, the high beams are way too high. Wow, these lights are great. So they'll be probably even better once we angle them down, because they are really high up, but you can see everything now. Low beams, high beams, and low beams. All right, so low beams, high beams, low beams. All right, that's try, good. Try no beams, turn off the lights. Okay. Because that was with halos, right? Yeah. Okay. So low beams, high beams, low beams, high beams, low beams. And auxiliary lights. Okay. And then go right over here again. So much better. There's the high beams again. Yeah, you bring it, you gotta bring it down. Yeah, they're very nice. Up. I mean, with the old headlights, though, you couldn't even tell they were angled up because they were just so dim. Wow. Oh, uh, low beams, and then with the auxiliary lights. Yeah, the auxiliaries aren't needed. Yeah. OEM low beams and OEM high beams. And then low beams and high beams. And low beams. And no beams. That's with only halo? Just the halos, yeah. I mean, those halos actually really do light up quite a bit. 